Hey guys, welcome to Destiny Academy. My name is Pramod, and in this tutorial, this is a part C, part four of the series of APA testing interview questions and answer. So, uh, guys, in the previous uh, interview questions, especially related to part one, part two, and part three, we have discussed more about the like more, mostly around twenty, twenty-five, or thirty questions, which are commonly asked in APA testing and interview questions. So, in this uh, video, especially, I'm going to cover five more questions. Which I uh, believe are important, and so let's get started. All right. So, guys, uh, as you can see on mind map, uh, these are the five questions mainly asked. Uh, so, let's start with the question number one. The first one is that uh, it basically uh, most of the time while we are doing interview or even we are asking interview about the questions related to API testing. So, uh, the people ask, uh, what is WSDL? So, W SDL it's basically an XML based file which basically tells the client's uh, application what the web services does. So it's a uh, if I go to this uh, let let's go to Wikipedia definition of it. So web w, uh, WSDL is basically web uh, service description language and it's basically has a certain kind of structure means uh, it's kind of a similar to a document which has a proper proper structure that needs and if you want to communicate with other services what you can do is that you can uh, package your information in this kind of uh, you can say uh, language where we have a certain structure if and that you can pass to the client server or any kind of server so uh, WSDL basically web, uh, it's a web services definition language which follows a particular structure and in this example here as you can see let me little bit zoom it zoom it out so this is a definition structure where you what you can do is that you can transport your information from uh, any client to server or any kind of uh, from one machine to another machine by using this mechanism so there what exactly going on is that uh, server is able to understand this language because he knows about the WSDL document that you have sent he knows that uh, you are going to send the information in this structure and this is the information that you are sending so he is able to uh, basically uh, going to understand it all right so uh, that's so that's what uh, WZ, WSDL is all about all right so uh, let's move on to the next question which is basically the what are the http requests and http response contain so this is one of the important question generally asked uh, where the uh, where the interviewer basically i want to know about what exactly you know about what are the things that are going to send with http request and http response so when we are doing http request so what we are doing is that we are basically using any kind of http method like get post post and delete these kind of uh, methods right so in the previous tutorial so part 2 and part 3 uh, I, so i have extensively uh, basically in depth had we had a discussion around uh, what are the different types of http methods like get post put patch and delete right so we are met, we are uh, sending certain kind of method and we are using a basically uri and we have a request uri which calls which generally calls endpoint or you can say url uniform resource locator and we are going to send some headers which contains like what kind of uh, encoding user agents or any kind of host entries that we are sending and now and and the last when we are doing the re stpp request we have a body which are we are going to send and body can be like json or can be xml right so that's what we are sending generally on stpp request and in the response what we are getting is that we are getting certain kind of status code so that's need to be tested while doing the api testing right so this uh, is a response structure it contains mainly uh, the status code some header fields and the body which is exactly uh, we are getting from server so for example let me uh, let's take an example uh, we are sending a body we are sending a post request to create a student right so when we are sending a request we are using any kind of method which is post we are sending to a particular url and we have cert certain header information like uh, we are sending that uh, we are accepting encoding uh, and this is the user agent that we are sending for example we are sending it for chrome and uh, the host we, uh, where we want to send and in the body i am basically sending the information about the student and in the response uh, what i am getting is that if 201 we i am getting it basically means it's created on the server 
and these are the headers generally that uh, uh, the server sends us and the body that it's created so any kind of success message right so this is the information basically you need to talk about whenever we are doing the http response and request this is the information basically it contains all right so let's uh, let's come to another example so uh, uh, another question i mean to say so can you use a get request instead of put request to create a resource so the answer is no guys most uh, this is an this is a question sometimes asked because get request only allows you to read the read any kind of resource over the internet if you are using http view so uh, and if you want to have know more about the what is the main difference between put and post and this is this we have discussed in the previous tutorial of part 3 and but uh, as we know that put is used to create as well as update a resource if the resource is not available then it will create a new resource and if the resource is available it's going to update that resource so that's what put do put call do okay so i hope you get the answer so uh, this is another interesting question is that what are the steps for testing an api so these are the basically an uh, let me undo this and these are the basically these are the steps basically which uh, how we do the api testing basically we are going to select the test case that need that uh, that has to be fulfilled we are going to develop an api test uh, api call means where we want to test it out and we need to configure the uh, basically to meet the test cases we need to configure the api parameters means we have to add the appropriate headers if say there is authorization is there certain kind of authorization like basic auth uh, or to or one bear a token or any kind of authentication there we need to have certain api parameters and we need to determine how to how you how we are going to validate this successful test for example if after successful we are getting a certain kind of message we are going to add that into our api test and uh, basically we are going to uh, check which programming language we are going to use while doing this to execute the uh, api call and after that we basically going to allow the api call to return and we are going to validate the data that is written all right so these are the major steps basically preparing uh, if i give you in, in a nutshell it's like uh, preparing your api parameters as well as the api endpoints to create uh, to send the request and after that after the request is successful we are going to validate the results that's what we do but that's what's the main steps to test an api all right so let's uh, let's come to the very interesting question which is what are the six major constraints we press today so uh, these are the six ones that i have we have uh, discussed earlier in the part 1 or part 2 that uh, these are the six major constraints so if any kind of api uh, basically follows these six constraints then we call it rest api or restful web services and uh, for example uh, these are like uniform interface client stateless layered layer system cacheable and code on demand so six constraint and uh, if you go to my uh, api testing using postman series uh, and uh, you will see an in depth uh, i have explained in depthly in depth about these six major constraint but i would what i would suggest you guys guys is that uh, let me open this url and uh, i'm going to mention this url in the description also that uh, she has like explain these six constraint very well and i'm not going to just repeat it out but uh, these six, six constraint and uh, these are given with certain examples and i would suggest you specially to go through this url and uh, learn more about the six major constraints of for rest all right so i hope that makes sense guys and uh, thanks a lot for watching this video and if you have liked this uh, interview series especially let me know in the comments and don't forget to uh, like share and comment and if you have any kind of doubt i may, i will be happy to help contact me at contact@testingacademy.com i will be happy to help you out and uh, see you in the next video thanks a lot